I gotta say hello and a big thank you to Mark Patterson. He recently watched episode 85 where we swapped out the furling line for our head sail. And at the time, when I was putting it all back together, I thought, that's a kind of a flimsy way of doing things. Well, Mark's actually pointed out something that when it's pointed out is blatantly obvious. So I'm gonna show you exactly what we did wrong and what we should have done. And I'm actually gonna do what we should have done right now. I'm Barry. I'm Anne Shea. This is the continuing journey of Sailing ABC. Friday morning and the plan that we had to rent a car for a couple of days didn't pan out because we didn't take into consideration the fact that it is the height of summer and nobody has any cars available for two days when they can have them available to somebody who wants to rent it for a week. So we're actually sitting on a bus. Dolmus, we are going to the site of Ephesus. Uh, so this time around while we're in the Kushidasa area, we're only going to go to Ephesus. Next time we're in the area, we will make sure we get ourselves to Pamukkale. But today, Ephesus. I'm so looking forward to it because I heard about it when I was a little girl. So it's been something I've wanted to see <laughs> decades. <laughs> Behind there. That reminds me of a Seinfeld, was it a Seinfeld episode? Oh, the horse he, was farting. He fed in beans. <laughs> 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 anyway. So those are the horse-drawn carriages that you can get from the town of Seljuk. Uh, and they'll take you here. And obviously you can get them back from here to there. Oh, that stinks. Yeah, that little poo bag didn't work, did it? No, it's got a hole in it. <laughs> so it was uh, 20 minutes or so on the Dolmush, yep. and we are a kilometre away from the Ephesus site. Um, so all we're going to do is basically just walk a kilometre and we get there. Yeah. Now, the thing is about Ephesus, it's got two entrances. There's the upper entrance and the lower entrance. He's going to the upper entrance. <laughs> And uh, <laughs> I'm not sure, but I think this is the lower entrance, yeah. uh, which does, of course, mean that we've got to walk up the site. But when we come back down, we'll be coming downhill. Nearly there. And it's kind of a little bit hazy and overcast today, which has given us a little bit of respite from mm. uh, from the yeah. the heat. Yeah. Yes, it looks like a really well spread out site as well doesn't it looking yeah. at the aerial photograph of it so yeah apart from that i don't really know much about it no. so i know it's the height of the summer season and uh this is probably going to be our very first ancient site that we're visiting yes, that um we have had to coffee. share with a lot of other people uh, so we're not sure how busy it's going to be but looking at the entrance it looks very very busy right now last time it was busy like this with queues was when we were in istanbul wasn't it yeah, yeah, that's right, yeah. So we're not going to be the only tourists in town today. No, but at least we've got our museum cards. So that might mean that we can move forward to a Faster. different section. Yeah. Okay, we're inside now. And uh, once you've run the gauntlet of... Um, <laughs> People trying to sell you water. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, there's no water once you get in there we're going it's okay we've, we've got, got some. some it's not enough you, you not haven't enough. got enough you're gonna die <laughs> <laughs> so once you got past the water sellers uh, and the people who want to give you a personal guided tour um, getting in is easy we just use our museum cards Very and quick. straight through straight straight away so we're in now we've got plenty of water we're not gonna die we're gonna go and show you Ephesus okay let's do it We're currently as high as we're allowed to climb due to areas being cordoned off for restoration work and we're actually two-thirds of the way up of the seating levels. Like we said, this is the 
biggest amphitheatre we've ever seen. And it's in relatively good nick, but a lot of that could be down to the restoration work, which is obviously ongoing here and uh, quite active. But amazing views. They've also got uh, evidence of human occupation on the Ephesus site from 7000 BC. Yes, BC. Here are some columns that are still on site, but there are some very dark green, very large columns that are in the High Sophia in Istanbul, which were taken from Ephesus. Now that is impressive. <laughs> this is what I wanted to see since I was a little girl. <laughs> so excited. If you like what we're doing here on Sailing ABC, then why not consider becoming a patron? There are many different tiers offering many different rewards, so check out the address on the screen right now and find a tier that's suitable for you. It can cost you less than a cup of coffee a month. We're coming to the upper gate area of Ephesus and the crowds are thinning here. Uh, the heat, the midday heat is absolutely horrendous. I feel as though I just, just walked into a shower with my clothes on. And, uh, and she's having a few palpitations. Yeah, my heart's really beating fast and I'm trying to stop every now and then because I'm getting a bit lightheaded. So I think we're at the top, so it's all downhill from here. And uh, when we do get down, we'll have run out of our water and we'll be able to buy some more water. It's an amazing sight though, Pass, isn't it? Like, it's, huge. it's huge. It is yeah. massive and it would take you know, more hours than we've got yes. to take it all in. Yeah. We'd actually like to get your feedback on these ancient sites that we visit. Um, leave a comment down below and just let us know, do you like them? Uh, do you not like them? Why do you like them? Why don't you like them? And um, yeah, just tell us what you think about these ancient sites we visit and how we present them. Yeah. That just about wraps up our tour around Ephesus. Or, oh, as it's called here, Ephes. Ephes, that rings a bell. Mm -hmm. Plan now is to go out and uh, see if there's a, an horse in Kark yes. that will uh, take us to Seljuk, yes. where we're going to have some lunch, I think. Yes, I think we need that. I think it's uh, a sit down. Sit down. More water. Okay. Well, we just spoke to the guy uh, with the horse and carriages, and um, it's 100 lira uh, to get the carriage there, whereas we can get a dolmas for probably around about five lira. With our budget, we're going on the Dolmus. Well, it was literally a five minute ride to the town of uh, Seljuk. And it was only five yeah, so pretty good price. Uh, we've just stopped in this pretty basic uh, street restaurant in the middle of town, about five minutes walk from the bus station. Got some fizzy water, got some fizzy beer, and we've got some Adana kebabs coming. Cheers. Your water first. Oh, that is so, so good. good. And the restaurant manager or proprietor suggested we have this table because it's got air conditioning. Oh, Wasn't that a nice door? And he turned it up high for us. Dana, kebabs have arrived. Yeah. We've been in Turkey for almost two years now, and it it always blows our mind when it comes to paying the bill. Um, we had three beers, two fizzy waters, and two uh, Adana kebab meals. Uh, came to a total of 138 lira, which is close enough to 22 Aussie dollars. 22 Aussie dollars. It's just so affordable. Paid for by not taking a horse and cart. Yeah, horse and cart. Horse and carriage. Okay. We're about to head back to the Tishikala Archives. So it's, if you come to Soju, it's the Koshen restaurant. In the, in the kind of like a raised square area, um, just up from, up from the uh, bus station. Uh, so we're going to head back down to the bus station and uh, find out when the next bus back to Kushidasa is. Yeah, that's another really good system they've got here, these Dolmush. The little minibuses that mm. run all over the place and don't have designated stops, do they? They just no, Somebody no. just stands on the side of the road and goes, and they <laughs> stop and pick them up. 
Or if I you mean, want to get off. Have, they do have they some, some designated. Yeah. But I think, you know, if you if you kind of hail them, because we've seen them do that yeah. along the country roads, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's really good. Well, that was a busy bus on the way back. It took exactly 30 minutes. Um, you took exactly the same route. Yeah. And dropped people off along the way in various stops. Uh, now, all we've got to do is get to Migros, get some supplies in, get back to the boat. My leg, my feet are knackered. Since, yeah, since had a bit of uh, hip damage in, uh, where were we, Yalla for that? My hips could do with this. Alright, uh, taxi time it is. There's one over there. Taxi? Uh, Marina? Marina. Just a surprise comparison between the Dolmush and a taxi. That little trip from where the Dolmush station is in Kushidasa Central to the marina entrance was 21 lira, whereas the whole trip from Kushidasa to uh, Seljuk, Seljuk uh, was uh, 20 lira. If you want to get a taxi from here all the way to, to Ephesus. Ephesus, it's 50 euros. euros. We'll put the conversion on the screen for that. <laughs> the gypsies are in town. <laughs> ah, home. Just recently, while we were in Didim, it came to that time of year for uh, renewing our boat insurance. We originally insured with Topsail Insurance in the UK. They were quite happy to take us on board as complete and utter novices and um, basically insurers, which was you know, really, really helpful at the time. When it came to renewal this year, the price uh, seemed to go up, even though we were getting discounts. So we also had another problem with Topsail in the fact that they wouldn't let us go any further east than 30 degrees in the Mediterranean. And that actually rules out Finike Marina, where we are winter berthing, and also Antalya Marina, which is even further east. So we started looking at alternatives and we found Allianz Insurance in Turkey uh, can give us coverage for the whole of the Mediterranean for a very similar price, in fact, slightly lower. And the, um, the thing is with both of these insurance, I've got to point out, it is an agreed value on the boat. So the agreed value uh, for these quotes is 99,000 euros of the value of the boat. So let me just give you some prices here. So top sale in the UK uh, for their renewal, they wanted 1,282 euros. And as I said, we couldn't go further east than 30 degrees. Now, Allianz in Turkey, 1,206 euros. So basically we're saving uh, 78 euros. Not, not a big saving, but the bonus is of course with Allianz in Turkey, we are covered for the whole of the Mediterranean area, which means we are covered while we're in our marina berth and when we go further east and explore. So thank you very much to Samet for organizing our Turkish insurance. And also thank you very much to Topsail for taking on complete noobs in the first place. And that's our update on our boat insurance. I gotta say hello and a big thank you to Mark Patterson. He recently watched episode 85 where we swapped out the furling line for our head sail. And at the time when I was putting it all back together I thought that's a kind of a flimsy way of doing things. Well Mark's actually pointed out something that when it's pointed out is blatantly obvious. So I'm going to show you exactly what we did wrong and what we should have done and I'm actually going to do what we should have done right now. This stainless steel cover that goes all the way around the outside of the drum uh, is actually held on by these three uh, bolts here. Now, if we look at the front of the drum, as you can see, the stainless steel cover here goes behind this bit of plastic and a bolt goes through the plastic into the stainless steel. Well, let's take a look at the front bit again. Here at the front, we've got the bolt going through the stainless steel into the plastic. This stainless steel should be behind this plastic bit. Basically what I've got to do is undo these bolts, try not to lose them overboard, and then get this tucked in behind there like that, and now screw in the bolt. There's that one correctly installed, and here is the other one correctly installed. Thank you very much for that, Mark. That has been a niggling little thing 
in the back of my mind ever since we did this job. And now it's a job done properly. You're still watching? Cool. Give us a big thumbs up and if you haven't already, subscribe and that way you'll get notifications of future video updates from Sailing ABC. Until we see you next time, stay safe and healthy.